Okay, hello everybody. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much for being so many people in the room <laughs> to, <laughs> to understand the French uh, financial law and the impacts of um, open source software. So, who I am? Uh, first of all, I am, sub I am a person that loves open source software. And uh, if I'm here today talking to you, it is because uh, open source uh, software gave me the opportunity to do the job I'm doing today, which means uh, I have a web agency. And uh, I have, uh, when I started, I decided to use an open source software, which is called Doliba. I don't know if you know about it. It's a well-known uh, open source uh, software to make invoices. And then because I'm a developer, I have started my own uh, web shop selling extensions for Joomla. So here it is. So I have a web shop and I use uh, a Joomla extension to do it. But today, because of a new French financial law, I cannot do my business the same way as uh, it was before, as it is before since the 1st of January 2018. This is not possible anymore. So why is this? Why is the reason? The reason is that there is a new uh, law, which is an anti-fraud VAT law. And why? Is this slow? Because uh, the VAT represents 50% of the government revenue, which means it's a lot. And the VAT fraud represents a big, uh, a big, a huge amount of money. So the government wants to, to limit this fraud, which is absolutely uh, normal. So the, the numbers that the government, the administration gave us is 17 million euro per year. And uh, audits around 45,000 audits and 11 million uh, euro of uh, recovery of that uh, after those audits, which sounds like a lot of money actually. So what is a little bit the history of the law? The history of the law, first, they decided in 2013, to vote. they voted a law to fight against VAT fraud, and the law exactly is called to fight against VAT fraud and major economic and financial crime. So it is a very general law to fight against VAT. In 2015, they have voted an article which is called Article 88, which defines the terms how to respect a law, what are the conditions that the software, uh, invoicing software should respect, and how to justify that your software is respecting those conditions. So this was back in 2015, and the law must apply the 1st of January 2018. But there was, they called that a cash register. They call that a law which applies to cash, cash register system. And what happens? What happened is that cash register in French, at least, it means that you are dealing with cash. So nobody, no people having e-commerce software, they did not really feel concerned by the law, and also people writing software for uh, invoicing software, they did not really understand the law. So there was a FAQ which was uh, written by the administration, which tried to explain a little bit more without the complex uh, terms of the law to, def to explain to the vendors of software what should be the requirements, what should be the conditions of the law. Uh, at the first, so this is the what happened. There are a lot of things that happened, but and the 30th of December 2017, which is uh, two days before the law should apply, they changed the definition of what they call cash register system. So two days before to restrict a little bit more. 
So this is the point about this law. The problem is vocabulary. What means? Who is concerned by the law? What are the companies that are really concerned by the law? What really means a cash register software for, uh, from the administration point of view? What means a publisher? What, what exactly means the publisher from the administration point of view? So let's start with what is a cash register system? So the cash register system means how are you doing your payment trackings? Are you doing this on a piece of paper with a pen? Not a pencil, a pencil is not allowed, but a pen is allowed. And, or are you doing it with a spreadsheet? If the answer is you are doing that way, then you are not concerned by the law. If you are doing your uh, accounting, your invoices, using a dedicated system, which is, for example, a spreadsheet with macros, anything, uh, a, a software, if, for example, you have a balance system where you put your fish or your cheese and then it will cal calculate the amount that you have to pay, then you are concerned by the law. So the next question you should ask yourself to know if you are really using a cash register system, if, if it automates or memorizes payments. So in case of a, a if you are using a piece of paper and, uh, and a pen, then it does not memorize payments. If you are using a spreadsheet, but you only use the calculation, uh, uh, calculation, the calculator of the, and, but you don't memorize your, uh, your invoice via your spreadsheet, then you are not concerned by the law. But as soon as you, oops, sorry about that. So as soon as you memorize, you register, you do a save, then you are concerned by the law. So in this case, you are using a cash register system software. So now let's see which French companies are concerned by the law. So the question is, is the company subjected to VAT? Because if your company is not subjected to that, then we don't care. You can do whatever you want in a way. We don't care because you are not, uh, you cannot fraud that since you are not uh, paying that. So yes, you are subjected to law. So now what is under which conditions? Because at the first, in the first version of the law, everybody was concerned by the law, even though you are exempted of that. So they have changed that recently. And now in the cases you are exempt of that for some reason, then you are not concerned by the law. But, oops, I'm always using the wrong key. If you are not exempted, then you are submitted. You are uh, concerned by the law. Now the question is, who are your clients? If you are not if you are only doing B2B business, then you are not concerned by the law. And the reason is because B2B business, they already have a law uh, to tell them how to do invoice. There is already a formalism, a very um, uh, uh, specific ways to, to explain how you should do uh, B2B business. But when you do have clients, private clients, then, oh, shit, sorry, I have to put my finger on. At, as soon as you have one private client, only one private client, then you are uh, concerned by the law. It means, for example, that if you are a company selling, uh, let's say, blue box, whatever are it's those boxes. You only do business to business. Um, um, uh, you, you only have business uh, clients, but you sell your products to your employees. Um, for example, 20, 30% discount for them. 
then you are you end up doing B two C also. Uh, as soon as you have one client, then you are concerned by the law. You have to apply. So yes, you are concerned. Hello, welcome. So now the next is what is a publisher? This is a very uh, specific, what the administration means by publisher. So here I put exactly what they say in the law, Article 300 and Article 310. The publisher is the person who owns the code, so source code of the software, and who has control over the modification of the parameters of the product. This is a very important definition. And it, when you think about a commercial product, which is a non-open source software, you get a black box. Though, so this is if it is not if the black box is you don't have a lot of uh, parameters to configure it, then the publisher is the one that wrote the software, which is selling the software. But if the software has a lot of parameters and you can decide this, this uh, with configuration parameter, a lot of stuff, then you are not, the publisher is not any longer the person who delivers the software. They have a specific article, which is the article 310, which talks about open source software, which says a little bit the same, but they have a specific article about open source software. They say exactly the same, actually. It is that in case of open source software, the publisher can be the developer as long as the the developer has uh, developed all the requirements um, by the, uh, required by the law, and those requirements cannot be at all modified. Or it is the last contributor when his intervention has to the effect of modifying one or more of the parameters. So. It is the contributor, it can be uh, the, the one that writes the software, it can be the integrator, it can be different person. Yeah. So, what are the requirements now uh, that the cash register software should comply to? There are four requirements. Inalterability, which is in French, inalterability, which is also a very complicated word to say in French. <laughs> inalterability, securing the data, retention of the data, and archiving the data. Inalterability means that once the payment has been done, the, the, the data in the database cannot be changed any longer. If for example, you have a shop, a web shop. You, the person has uh, bought, uh, if, no, if you have a, a shop, a normal shop, if you are at a shop, you buy a blue box and you are at the, the, you are ready to pay and then you decide to have, to use the pink box. You don't want the blue box any longer. What should do the software? The software should do, okay, I have added on my bill uh, the blue box, I say minus one blue box and plus one pink box. This is the way of doing it. And in the web shops or tickets or whatever you are selling on the web, you should do exactly the same. You are not allowed to delete the line any longer. You have to use minus and plus sign. Um, securing the data means that you must uh, say you must sign the data to make sure that the data is not changed. 
that the data that somebody does not go in the database and change the prices of the product. Say, okay, I sold it for 10 euros, but uh, uh, it's not 10 euros, it's 5 euros. This is, you are not allowed to do it. So you have to sign the each line with, um, with different uh, protocols, algorithms. Some algorithms are allowed, some other algorithms are not considered as a, a good algorithm. So this is, there are some definition about how to secure the data. Retention means that every day you must um, do uh, an accounting of how many um, cells you did during the day. So you did uh, 10, 15, and 30, then you have to add them and you have to, to have a log of uh, the, how many cells you did during the day. And of course you have to sign it to sign it and to make it uh, sure that the data is not, that the file that you will provide that will say how many cells that you did during the day, this is the correct file, that nobody can, uh, you have to sign the file to make sure that the data that is contained inside this file is not, uh, it, it is not able to change it. Archiving is also the same. You have, it's also the same, um, having data, and you must keep them for six years. So knowing that if you are doing this six years only concern the B2C uh, business, but not B2B. When it is B2B, then it is 10 years. So those are the requirements that the software should uh, comply to. Now, how can you uh, prove that you are complying to the software, to the requirements, to the law? You have two ways of proving that you are complying to the law. The first way is um, the publisher, the one that wrote the software that goes to an organism and that will require, that will uh, ask for a certification. If it is a third party um, person that will check that your software is complies to the law. You have two organisms in France, one is called AFNOR and the other one is called LNI. And AFNOR is the first organism that uh, was allowed to give this certification. And LNE is uh, the uh, most recent one. I think it's, uh, they are allowed to, to give this certification since 2017. Um, it is uh, a, com a complex procedure and it concerns uh, only the payments of your software, not the rest of your software. If you are doing, for example, a web shop, it does not concern the product, it does not concern Joomla, it only concerns the payment part of the, of the, the extension that you are using. Major version for the administration means does not mean the major version of the software. It means as long if your software, if the checkout process, if the payment process is not changed, this is a minor version. If the payment software or the checkout, anything which concerns the payment is changed, then it is considered as a major version. So it has nothing to do with Joomla, it has nothing to do with the extension versioning, it is a specific um, administration point of view uh, about the versioning. How much does it cost? It is an average of 4,000 euros per year. It means that uh, Actually, it is the first year, it costs around 10 to 11,000 euros to get the certification. 
and you have to pay then after uh, 3,000 euros per year. You get the certification. The certification is valid for years, and it's valid as long as, uh, uh, from the administration point of view, it is a major version. If you change something in the in the payment system, then your certification is not valid any longer. So now the next. Uh, way of proving that you comply to the law is to do a declaration. What is the difference of between the declaration and the certification? The certification concerns the is uh, will be given is given by the organism, but the declaration is an individual declaration, is a kind of uh, there is a model which is provided by the French administration. You have two pages that you have to sign between the publisher and the company. The publisher says, uh, okay, my software is according to the law. And the company says, okay, uh, I, have a, uh, I agree that this... Uh, this uh, the, the, I don't do any changes in my software, and that the, the declaration is valid. It's a kind of contract between the publisher and the company. The difference between the two is that uh, the certification is given by a third party, but the declaration is given by the publisher, and the publisher cannot be cannot auto declare himself as uh, being as complying to the law so this is a big uh, difference except for one specific uh, nas uh, code the nas code is the code that says what kind of uh, business you are doing what kind of uh, business is doing your company and nas code is the business when you are doing uh, software um, e-commerce software, for example, then you can uh, use your own software to to prove that you're comply to the law. Now the next step is to see what are the consequences if you don't comply to the law. So you have uh, it is a crime in, if you give a false certificate if you tell that you are. You have uh, this, the one of the two organism certificate, or if, if you give a false declaration, that means that you do not comply to the law, but you say that you comply to the law, then it is a criminal offense. You have you can have up to three years imprisonment, up to forty-five thousand fine, and it concerns everybody. If you are a French or an French publisher, it doesn't matter. Everybody is concerned by the law, as long as it is a French company that uses your software. The French uh, administration, the French financial po uh, police, is allowed to go to your um, company unannounced when they want. They can check your uh, everything that concerns your your software, everything that concerns your business, and announce. I know that they have uh, reinforced all those penal sanctions uh, recently, um, and they have uh, they, they are doing it even more uh, um, complex in a way. But those are the. This was the state uh, of the penal section, sanctions, at least in uh, December two thousand and thirteen. So now, what are the consequences on open source software? So, f first of all, what is? I said there is a big difference between the certification and the declaration. So, in which case? Can we use a certification, and in which case can we use a declaration? So let's see the first case. You are a company, a French company. You 
want uh, you need an invoice system or you want to do a web shop e-commerce web shop but you don't want to take care of it you want to go through a third party person a web agency for example that will take care of uh, your um, configuration and uh, everything so what can do this web agency this web agency can do can select a product that has been certified or can select uh, open soft uh, open source software and do him himself the declaration second case you have a french company submitted to the law of course which has its uh, own uh, which want to deal alone with his um, invoice system or with the web shop and he does not want to go to a third party company in this case the consequence is that this company ends up being the publisher and in this case it means that the only thing that this company is allowed to use is a certification product so what are the solutions um, let's look, have a look at what are the solution in the with the, the Joomla outside Joomla let's have a look at what is the solution at PrestaShop what is doing PrestaShop PrestaShop has decided I don't know what they oh yeah has decided to do a module which they called REM88 um, they will give it for free for all the customers and they are in the process actually to have it certificate they are not certificated yet but they will be certificated uh, so it means that for a PrestaShop user depending on their configuration if they are using a third party um, uh, agency a third party uh, company then they can use PrestaShop because then the third party company will give the declaration but they can also use the the module provided by PrestaShop to use PrestaShop to do web shops WooCommerce which is also very used uh, solution in France so they have not made any official uh, declaration what they did is that they made the mistake one day and they they thought that they were the uh, they e-commerce web shops were not concerned by the law but it is a mistake so they changed their mind and now what they are doing is that they have asked one company WooCommerce have asked one company which is called the uh, I don't have my notes, so I don't remember exactly the name of the company. Mm. <coughs> I think it's Jetlag or Jet, uh, uh, a company. They have asked the company to provide a module, to develop a module that they will provide for free. Actually, I have put a question mark, but I know it is for free. And that they will ask for the certification, which means that anybody which is doing web shops with uh, this uh, with WooCommerce will have absolutely no problem they can use WooCommerce Magento Drupal I have absolutely no clue what they are doing I try to find out uh, maybe I'm not using the right keywords maybe I'm not looking at the right place but I have absolutely no clue what they are doing if officially I did not find any information about it so now let's see uh, the Joomla uh, in the case of Joomla in case of Joomla it's a little bit specific because Joomla is not uh, e-commerce uh, software so when I put the logo of uh, Joomla I'm talking about uh, Joomla extensions that do payments but I'm not talking about Joomla itself 
So we have the first solution, which is provided by, uh, which may be provided by, will be provided by you, Edwin, which is here, which uh, is called NF525. Yeah, which will be, as far as I understood, as far as what you wrote on different forums, which will be a black box, a crypt encrypted uh, uh, solution, which, uh, so, person which are interested can talk to you, and so, which will allow people to, uh, which will allow um, any kind of business to use extension. But at the moment, you don't have the certification. You are not in the process. The process to prepare the stuff, and it will not be free, and it will be a cross system. So I have received contact from Magento, and uh, so it's not only for the lab, but also for the group or WordPress, or whatever, the bar, the tiger. OK. So. Now, developers, French developers, can also provide uh, some solutions. And uh, in this case, uh, some open source solution, because the solution provided by Edwin is not an open source solution. So French developers can provide open source uh, solutions. But in this case, it will be uh, via the uh, declaration the publisher will have to use a declaration and it will only be uh, used by person using a w if you are doing a web shop it can only be used in case of uh, you are going through a web agency if you are not going through a web agency you cannot use an open source solution or i don't know this is the, 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 what we are going to see now, doing some case study exactly to find out what, are, what is going on. So let's say a company, let's take this case, company and certification. So this is the company, for example, it is me a web, as a web agency, it is me as a shop owner, if I want to use, I'm using Joomla in one case, I need an invoice system, a ticket system, as long as there is something which involves payments, then I must use a certified um, solution to, that, to be able to meet the, requ the four requirements, the four low requirements. The publisher ends up being the person that provides this uh, uh, solution, this software solution, and the person, the two person that are from a panel uh, point of view that are concerned by the law are the publisher and the company. So now let's see case number two, case that study number two, which is the web agents, let me see. Oops. Oh, sorry about that. This is what I saw. And this is the last point I forgot to tell about that uh, since you have a certified solution, the web owner of the company can have access to the database and can have access to FTP because the certification provides a way to make sure that you are not doing any kind of modification in your software that but the certification is not only valid as long as you do not uh, modify one of the requirements uh, of the provided by the software so case study number two now web, company web agency and declaration so this is the case where the company goes through a web agency or any kind of other uh, company that will help them to configure their invoice system. Let's say they take Joomla, they need an invoice system, 
they use uh, open source software which um, uh, will provide them a solution to meet the four requirements. So in this case, it is the uh, the web agency which is the publisher and in this case we can ask ourselves if the publisher it is a good idea for them to give the access to FTP and to the database because the person the panels the panel section sanctions are both so is it a good idea to give the, the web agency give the FTP or the database access to the client I don't think so myself now the last case study which is the company the web agency and the web agency that uses a certification uh, product here it is we have the company we have the third party company which takes care of the configuration of the software. They, he has decided to use Joomla. He needs an invoice system. He uses a certified solution that will provide him the, uh, the uh, makes the, the web shop uh, cert um, that the four uh, famous conditions about the law are uh, met. So now the question is, who is the publisher? This is, uh, is it the certified solution or is it the web agency? So this is a question. It is not very well explained in the law, but in my own opinion, is this still the web agency, which is the the publisher, which means that in this case, it is still the web agency that is, that must, I have forgotten that, but that will need to provide a, a declaration, even though the web agency uses a certified solution, the web agency will have to provide a declaration to the client to say that the installation that they are using complies to the law. Nice. Exactly. So, in this case, uh, should the web agency provide the, the database access and FTP access? I will say it's a question mark too, but we can say that probably the solution provided by the certified um, software that the web agency is using will um, stop the user or will alert the web agency if anything is changed in their software. So that is it. The credits about all the icons I've used. I hope I did not miss some. And this is the thank you for being here. Do you have any question? So concerning cheat ticketing, the, the, the point, because you were not here at the beginning, the point was to say that you must provide us uh, a way for, if we want to be able to use your solution, is that you must provide us um, triggers that will help us to find out if uh, the payment has been made, when the payment has been made, and to help us, because uh, I don't know if you were there, but there is one of the condition, which is that we cannot change the lines. So just to make sure that we are able to add uh, uh, plugins that will make your software uh, compatible to the law. Do you have any questions? Okay. <laughs>